is one step closer to having a new elected president. Hello, and welcome to Catalan News. The candidate for the post until now, Jordi Sanchez, who is in jail, intends to step down as MP in the near future. This will mean giving way to a candidate who could actually attend the chamber session to take office. Sanchez's defense revealed his intentions in the Spanish Supreme Court in an effort to get him out of prison. Yet the prosecutor requested for him to stay in his cell. Another official behind bars also faced court today, and his fate could be different. Here, Catalan News will get you all the details and will also stop in Geneva again as debates on human rights in Catalonia are still being held there. Four officials closely linked to the events ending with the Declaration of Independence last autumn are still in pretrial prison. The defense for two of them tried to persuade the judges once more to let them go home after five months. Each of them might face different outcomes. Yet, today's session will not only have a judicial impact. It has been a day of major surprises in the Spanish courts, and it could have major consequences for Catalan politics. Joaquin Forn and Jordi Sanchez, two pro-independence leaders jailed in Madrid, arrived in the Supreme Court in the morning. The reason? Yet another attempt to demand their freedom. Sanchez, a grassroots activist, was sent to jail more than five months ago. Forn, a deposed minister, has been in prison for almost as long. They face criminal charges for their role in Catalonia's push for independence. In total, 28 people are being investigated and 12 have been held in custody at some point in the past few months. The court eventually released most of them, but decided to keep Fawn and Sanchez behind bars, along with the Catalan vice president and another activist. But this time, the decision could be different. The prosecutor has requested €100,000 bail for Fawn, which paves the way for his release pending the court decision. For Sanchez, the prosecutor's stance remains the same. He must stay in prison. While Fawn gave up his seat in Parliament, Sanchez maintained his post as MP, and he has even been put forward as the candidate for Catalan president. Sanchez said that he will respect the Spanish constitution, and he rejected unilateral means to achieve independence. But that was not enough for the judge to let him go free. Sanchez has now decided to cede even more ground and will stand down as an MP. His decision puts an end to his short-lived presidential candidacy and also raises an obvious question. If not him, who will be the next Catalan president? The prosecutor also focused on the investigated officials abroad once again. Last week it urged the Spanish government to work with Switzerland authorities and Interpol to arrest Carles Puigdemont while he's in Geneva. The prosecutor has requested the Supreme Court move to seize their passports. This as a reaction to their increasing trips throughout Europe. Carles Puigdemont, living in Brussels, was in Denmark for two days, is currently in Switzerland, and will travel directly to Finland from the Helvetic country. One of his ministers in Belgium was in the Netherlands, whereas another one has gone to Scotland. She has also announced recent trips to Austria and Germany. The aim of most of these trips is spreading the independence cause in Europe, while the prosecutor's intentions are to bring them to court. As we mentioned earlier, the effects of the hearings at Spain's Supreme Court today will go beyond the judicial process. Jordi Sanchez's intention to step down will likely set forth a series of political motions that could end up with a new Catalan president taking office. This could take place as early as next week, before Easter break. Catalonia might have a new president by the end of this month, once and for all, three months after the election last December. Jordi Sanchez's intention to step down as an MP could start something of a domino effect. The parliament speaker will make a statement tomorrow at noon, clarifying what comes next. He's expected to undertake a new round of talks with political parties, which should end up in another candidate being nominated. In the meantime, the main pro-independence candidacy, Junts per Catalunya, should get to decide who will be the chosen one. This could happen in a matter of days, as ally Esqueda has asked its MPs not to take a holiday break this Easter in case there is an investiture debate. Some domino pieces, though, might not fall so easily. The first is the identity of the backup candidate. After Spain's courts blocked Puigdemont and Sanchez, all eyes are set on Jordi Turull. He was in the last Catalan cabinet and spent a month in jail following the declaration of independence. However, unlike Puigdemont and Sanchez, he would be able to attend his investiture. Yet, unionist parties are skeptical of him as he is still being investigated by Spain's courts. The Spanish government representative in Catalonia also showed his disapproval. 
que sigui una persona capaz de liderar aquest govern, que governi para tothom. Y sobre todo, que sigui una persona que estigui lliure y neta de toda causa judicial. The second domino piece that might prove difficult to tip over is the minor far-left coup party. Its seats are essential for the pro-independence majority, but today it insisted that the main parties in favour of a Catalan Republic need to more clearly state that independence will be implemented. Qualsevol nom que se'ns plantegi serà bo si és per presidir un govern republicà. Qualsevol nom que se'ns plantegi no serà bo si és per presidir un govern autonòmic. The political events putting an end to the stalemate are likely to speed up now, but the peace is not falling in the right order might take the country to a snap election. While the debate over who the next Catalan leader is still underway, another discussion is also ongoing. As we told you yesterday, the United Nations headquarters in Geneva is hosting a series of events featuring Catalonia along with relevant individuals in the independence movement. And what's the main topic of discussion? A possible violation of human rights from Spain in Catalonia. The Catalan issue has made it into the plenary session of the United Nations Council of Human Rights. A Catalan MEP spoke there today and criticized Spain's attitude towards Catalonia. In fact, Jordi Soule claimed that Spain is violating Catalonia's right to self-determination. In his speech at the UN headquarters in Geneva, the MEP also denounced the imprisonment of Catalan leaders, whom he referred to as political prisoners. The very fact that in 2018, in the European Union there are political prisoners and politicians in exile just because they wanted people to exercise their right to vote and decide is something that Democrats and defenders of human rights should never accept. Sule's statement was not welcomed by the Spanish authorities in Switzerland and prompted a quick reaction. La instrumentalización de los derechos humanos en aras de lograr objetivos políticos excluyentes e ilegales, repito bien, ilegales, supone una clara vulneración de la letra y del espíritu de la Declaración Universal de los Derechos Humanos. Before his speech, Soule moderated a side event attacking the situation in the country. The conference focused on the right of self-determination in the 21st century. Two professors took part in the discussion as well as an independent UN expert. He defended the holding a referendum on independence in Catalonia. We don't know how they're going to decide, you know. <laughs> you might only have 51% who want uh, to leave. But at least they have a right to decide. They have a right to express themselves. There's nothing more democratic than a referendum. This morning's side event on Catalonia was not the only one taking place in Geneva. Discussions on the Catalan political situation continued in the afternoon. In this room here at the UN headquarters, four women took the floor to denounce what they see as a violation of Catalans' rights. Uh, they included uh, the partner of one of the Catalan state leaders, as well as a minister of the deposed Catalan government. A lawyer, an international lawyer, as well as a member of the European Parliament, also regretted the lack of action of the European Union towards the Catalan situation. Tomorrow is Puigdemont's turn. After he took part in a debate on self-determination on Sunday, the Catalan leader will give a speech at an academic event organized by a Swiss university. The conference will deal with the importance of independence in the 21st century. Moving on to business news now, but still related to politics. 2017 was not all a bed of roses in terms of foreign investment in the country, despite a positive start to the year. According to figures released today, foreign investment in Catalonia fell by 40% last year, down to a total of 3.1 billion euros. This significant drop comes after two previous record years, in which investment from abroad exceeded the 5 billion mark. So what can be expected for this year? According to a recent ranking by the Financial Times, Catalonia is the top country in South Europe for foreign investment for 2018 and 2019. Some of the big names with interest in the country include the e-commerce giant Amazon, the Hard Rock Group, and Norwegian Airlines, which is to move its South European headquarters to Catalonia later this year. Yesterday, we told you about a refugee rescue ship from a Catalan NGO, blocked, in Italy. The Italian authorities are investigating a recent rescue after considering that the NGO Proactiva Open Arms was fostering illegal immigration. Today, we learned from Catalan media that the members of the vessel could face between 5 and 15 years in prison and a fine of 15,000 euros per refugee rescued. The boat saved more than 200 people who were trying to go from Libya to Europe.
Ancient Rome might not call up images of Catalonia, but perhaps it should. It was the first place to be colonized by the empire on the whole Iberian Peninsula, and even just wandering around Barcelona can show you ruins from that time. And archaeologists just uncovered another unique finding deep under the sea. There are reminders of ancient Roman times all throughout Catalonia. Famously, in the capital of the lost empire, Tarraco, modern-day Tarragona, to the south of Barcelona, where visitors can still see a grandiose amphitheater. And there are more and more still being found, like, for example, a sunken ship and its cargo. Archaeologists located the vessel off the coast of the tiny northern Formigas Islands. The relic lies 45 meters deep, with over 100 amphorae discovered. What makes it unique is that, now, Part of the boat's original wood structures has been found. This is not only the first of its kind in the Vajampurda region, it's also very rare for the whole Mediterranean. Eh, ens costa molt i aquest vaixell ja és molt molt fondo, està més de 45 metres, és molt complex a fer eh, treballs aquesta fondària i és per això que no es troben tants en, en, aquesta, en aquestes profunditats i sobretot en aquest, d'aquesta època. This is also because often shipwrecks took place off the coast following a violent crash. But experts theorize that in this case, it was perhaps a storm that made the boat sink, little by little. While the original discovery was made in 2016, each new campaign yields more and more surprises. The divers expect to find more amphorae, for example. And while they said that some had been stolen, this ended up being an advantage. It was thanks to the missing artifacts that the ancient wood structure was found. The Barcelona Symphony Orchestra and the National Orchestra of Catalonia presented the 2018-2019 season today. As all the details were made public, we were able to attend one of its rehearsals. Next season, the orchestra will continue to be led by the Japanese director Katsushi Ono for the fourth year. He will take the name to his native country in the Cultural Olympiad of Tokyo to be held in 2019. Beethoven, Brahms, Dvorak, Bartok and Tchaikovsky will be among the top composers whose pieces will be played by the orchestra, as well as Gustav Mahler. Some symphonies by Catalan authors, such as Enrique Granados, will also feature. We've come to the end of our show. And politics aside, today has been a special day for another reason. At 5.15 p.m. local time, spring officially began. But in some places, it might have been harder to believe. Once again, much of Catalonia woke up to views of snow-covered landscapes, even in Barcelona, where the surrounding mountains were capped in white. Again, in what has been an exceptional winter, the snow has fallen in strange places. Check it out, and see you tomorrow. <laughs>